Hi students, welcome to lesson number 45, Herbert Spencer. Herbert Spencer was a British philosopher and a contemporary of Auguste Comte. He contributed several key ideas to the field of sociology and its expansion. Like Comte, he too was trying to establish sociology as the science of society. Spencer had come into contact with Comte's ideas and attempted to bring shift in the study of society. His sociology is based on the evolutionary doctrine and the organic analogy. His central ideas revolve around organic analogy and evolution of societies. Objectives After completion of this lesson, you will be able to understand the contributions of Herbert Spencer, the concept of organic analogy and evolution of societies. Herbert Spencer was the first evolutionist who developed Darwinian evolutionism in the society. He assumed a society is a set of different parts. He compared the society with a biological organism. Society functions in the same way as a biological organism does. He advocated the idea of the survival of the fittest in his theory of evolution. In 1850, he published his first book, Social Statics. Spencer was influenced by Charles Darwin's book, The Origin of Species, published in 1859. Spencer's ideas about evolution were influenced by Darwin. However, Spencer stated that he was the first one to discover the basic ideas of natural selection and survival of the fittest. Spencer also advocated the principle of laissez-faire or free market. Spencer's method is scientific and empirical and it was influenced significantly by the positivism of August Comte. Because of the empirical character of scientific knowledge and because of his conviction that which is known biological life is in a process of evolution, Spencer held that knowledge is subject to change. The sociological works of Herbert Spencer such as Social Statics in 1850, The Study of Sociology in 1873, Principles of Sociology during 1876 to 96 are dominated by the idea of evolution. His magnum opus was The Synthetic Philosophy published in 1896, a comprehensive work containing volumes on the principles of biology, psychology, morality and sociology. Spencer believed that throughout all times there actually has been social evolution from a simple uniform or homogeneous structure to a complex multiform or heterogeneous one. In fact, Darwin's theory brought a revolutionary change in the understanding of how life evolved on earth from a simple unicellular organism to multicellular complex organisms like human beings themselves. Spencer's entire scheme of knowledge rested upon the belief that evolution was the key concept for understanding of the world as a whole and of human beings place within it. In the process of evolution, there is gradual change and movement from a condition of simplicity to a condition of organized complexity a condition of indefiniteness to a condition of definiteness, a condition in which their parts are relatively undifferentiated 
to a condition of increasing specialization in which their parts are characterized by a complex differentiation of structure and function. From an unstable condition consisting of a large multiplicity of similar units relatively incoherent and disconnected in their behavior to a stable condition consisting of relatively fewer parts. Human beings now are so intricately organized and articulated that their behavior is regular, coherent and predictable. He achieved an influential synthesis of knowledge advocating the preeminence of individual over society and of science over religion. Spencer defined sociology as the study of social evolution and believed that the ultimate goal of societal evolution is complete harmony and happiness. Spencer's theory of evolutionary change is built upon three basic principles integration, differentiation and definiteness. Spencer argued that homogeneous phenomena are inherently unstable which makes them subject to constant fluctuations. Thus, homogeneous systems grow to become heterogeneous. Spencer's general theory of social evolution involves the progress of society towards integration, heterogeneity and definiteness. It also includes a fourth dimension, the increasing coherence that is unity of social groups. Social groups according to Spencer strive towards greater harmony and cooperation through the division of labor and the state. It is important to note that Spencer does not develop a linear theory of social evolution. He acknowledges that dissolution or no change at all may occur at any given moment. As society grows, it becomes more complex and differentiated. Structures accompany this growth which function to regulate external concerns like military activities and sustain internal issues like economic activities. Distributing systems eventually emerge that function to help link together regulative and sustaining structures. Spencer considers the survival of the fittest as a law of existence applied to life. Life is the continuous adjustment of internal relations to external relations. Spencer proposed social Darwinism, the theory that Human groups and races are subject to the same laws of natural selection as Charles Darwin perceived in plants and animals in nature. According to the theory which was popular in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the weak were diminished and their cultures delimited while the strong grew in power and cultural influence over the weak. Social Darwinists held that the life of humans in society was a struggle for existence ruled by survival of the fittest, a phrase proposed by the British philosopher and scientist Herbert Spencer. Evolution of societies. Spencer sought to build two classificatory systems of society related to his thesis of social evolution. The first thesis states that in the process of social evolution, societies move from simple to various levels of compound on the basis of their degree of composition. According to Spencer, the aggregate of some simple societies gives rise to compound societies. The aggregate of some compound societies gives rise to doubly compound societies. 
the aggregate of some doubly compound societies gives rise to trebly compound societies. According to Spencer, simple societies consist of families, compound societies consist of families unified into clans, doubly compound societies consist of clans unified into tribes and the trebly compound societies such as our own have tribes brought together forming the nations or states. He distinguished between simple societies which were headless, those with occasional headship, those with unstable headship and those with stable headship. Compound and doubly compound societies were classified in terms of the complexity of their political organization. Similarly, various types of societies were ranked according to the evolution of their modes of settlement whether nomadic, semi-settled or settled. Societies generally were set to evolve from simple to compound and doubly compound structures through necessary stages. The stages of compounding and recompounding have to be passed through in succession. The second classificatory system is based on construction of types which may not exist in actual reality but which would help in analyzing and comparing different societies. Spencer proposes from military to industrial societies. The militant society. The militant society is a type in which predominant organization is offensive and defensive military action. Such society has the following characteristics. Human relationships in such societies are marked by compulsory cooperation. There exists a highly centralized pattern of authority and social control. A set of myths and beliefs reaffirm the hierarchical nature of society. Military society life is marked by rigorous discipline and a close identity between public and private life. The industrial society. The industrial society is one in which military activity and organization is peripheral to society. The greater part of society concentrates on human production and welfare. The characteristics of such a society are that these societies are marked by voluntary cooperation, firm recognition of people's personal rights, suppression of the economic realm from political control of the government and growth of free associations and institutions. Herbert Spencer was aware that societies need not fit into either of these systems totally. They serve the purpose of models to aid classification. These are some of the central ideas of Herbert Spencer. Organic Analogy Spencer established the hypothesis that society is like a biological organism and then proceeded to defend it against all objectives with great logical force. Indeed, he, rega he regarded the recognition of the similarity between society and organism as the first step towards a general theory of evolution. Society is thus viewed as being essentially analogous that is similar to an organism with its interdependent parts or organs making up the body of society. He presented the following analogy. The, the sustaining system in organism consists of mouth, gullet, stomach and intestines. It is by means of this system that food is digested and the whole organic machine 
is sustained. Society has its own sustaining system which refers to the productive system comprising of agriculture and manufacturing. The workers that is the men who farm the soil, work the mines and factories and workshops are the elementary organs of a society. The distributary system in an organism consists of blood vessels, heart, arteries and veins and they carry blood to all parts of the body. Means of communication and transport and along with them the wholesalers, retailers, bankers, railway and steamship men and others may correspond to the distributor or vascular system of an organism. Finally, the regulating system is the nerve motor mechanism which regulates the whole body. Government in society regulates and controls the activities of the individuals. The professional men, doctors, lawyers, engineers, rulers, priests, the thinkers in short perform the functions of the brain and the nervous system. Further, as Spencer opined, society also passes through the organic processes of birth, youth, maturity, old age and death. In his Principles of Sociology in 1898, Spencer observed some similarities between biological and social organism. Some of them are as follows. Firstly, Society and organisms are distinguished from inorganic matter by visible growth. A child grows up to a man, a small community becomes a great city, a small state an empire. Secondly, both grow in size and this growth is accomplished by increasing complexity of the structure. Thirdly, in the organism and in society, there is an interdependence of parts. The progressive differentiation of structure in both is accompanied by progressive differentiation of functions. Fourthly, in both, the differentiation of structure is followed by a similar differentiation of function. Fifthly, the life of society like the life of an organism is far larger than the life of any of the units of parts. Differences between organism and society. Having outlined these similarities, Spencer points out the ways in which societies and organism differ from each other. The differences are, firstly, the organism is a concrete integrated whole, whereas society is a whole composed of discrete and dispersed elements. Secondly, in an organism, consciousness is concentrated in a small part of the aggregate, while in society, consciousness is diffused. Thirdly, unlike organisms, societies have no specific external form such as a physical body with limbs or face. Fourthly, in an organism, the parts are fixed and bound together in close contact while in a society, parts are separated and dispersed. Fifthly, in an organism, the parts exist for the benefit of the whole. In a society, the whole exists merely for the benefit of the individual. Spencer accepted the ideas that a society was more than a collective name for a number of individuals. That is, it is not just a collection of several individuals but is a distinct entity. The whole is more than its parts. Thus, a house is more than a mere collection of bricks, wood and stone. It involves a certain ordering of parts. 
However, being an individualist, Spencer believed that unlike biological organisms where the parts exist for the benefit of the whole, in society it is the whole which exists for the benefit of the parts that is the individuals in society. The modern sociologists have criticized the organic analogy of Spencer. According to Bogardus, Spencer's conclusion contains contradictory elements. If a society is an organism, it undergoes a cycle of birth, maturity and death. But according to the principle of progress, the death of a society is not inevitable but depends on the vision, plans, courage and activities of that society's members. A society need never die. Tim Sheff is of the view that merely on the ground of systematic similarity, society cannot be considered as an organism. Herbert Spencer's concept of society as a super organic system had several problems. He was unable to see culture as part of an integrated whole. His explanation regarding the social evolution of societies from simple to compound and so on was also faulty. However, he formulated an integral theory of all reality. Summary. Herbert Spencer is a British social thinker. He was the first evolutionist who developed Darwinian evolutionism in the society. Spencer defined sociology as the study of societal evolution and believed that the ultimate goal of societal evolution is complete harmony and happiness. Spencer's theory of evolutionary change is built upon three basic principles, integration, differentiation and definiteness. Spencer considers the survival of the fittest as a law of existence applied to life. Life is the continuous adjustment of internal relations to external relations. According to Spencer, the aggregate of some simple societies gives rise to compound societies. The aggregate of some compound societies gives rise to doubly compound societies. The aggregate of some doubly compound societies give rise to trebly compound societies. The second classificatory system is based on construction of types which may not exist in actual reality but which would help in analyzing and comparing different societies. Here a different type of evolution is conceived of from military to industrial societies. Society is thus viewed as being essentially analogous that is similar to an organism with its interdependent parts or organs making up the body of society.